an Amazon EC2 instance. Now, when you start an instance, you choose the base image. We keep these as Amazon machine images or AMIs. We maintain a catalog of popular operating system images. We refresh these on a regular basis. We patch them. We do some baseline configuration on them. Now, you can also save your own images. You can take the concept of starting and building a Microsoft Windows Server, for example, configuring it how you will, and then saving that as your own gold image. And I talked earlier about how you can then use identity and access management within your organization so that when you start servers, you can restrict what images can be started. When you are using Amazon auto scaling, for example, we want to spin up new web servers very quickly, then you're probably going to do that from a pre-baked web server image that you've created to speed up how quickly that you can auto scale. We also have Amazon Marketplace images on here, which are pre-configured AMIs that are maintained by our partners that are typically paid by the hour, for example. And there are also community images. Many popular open source platforms, for example, people have done the work to configure and build those basic environments. They make them freely available within our, within our library for you to start up. So you choose your base image. You then choose the CPU, the memory, the architecture that you want. And it's important to remember that any point you decide you need to scale your CPU and memory, either up or down, then all you need to do is stop your instance, change the CPU and memory and the instance type, and restart it. So at this point in time, you choose which virtual private cloud or VPC subnet you want to put it in, or whether it's EC2 Classic, which is where we used to launch our instances straight onto the internet. Now, when it's deployed within a VPC, you can choose whether to automatically attach an elastic IP address or a public IP address to your instance. At this point in time, you can also choose up to five security groups to launch your instance in. You can add and remove security groups at any time. This just gives you the ability to start always with an instance coming up within a firewall. It's also at this time, as you choose which Amazon secret access keys are going to be able to log into that box as root or administrator, and you can also choose the identity and access management role at this point in time. That's optional as well for you. Once you've got a running instance, you take over and you turn this into your instance. You take responsibility for the final configuration of this instance because we can't do that for you. You have to think about hardening the operating system and your application platforms. All your standard hardening guides and techniques still apply here. Turn off unnecessary services patch things to the patch level that you're comfortable with. We have our own patch repositories, which makes it easy and quick to get these. You still have to choose when to apply those patches. You still have to think about host-based protection software, antivirus, intrusion prevention, maybe whitelisting integrity checking tools. You have to think about how you're going to audit that box, about what logs you want to save about how you're going to manage the user administrators, uh, the manage your user administration on that box. All of those things you have to do today, you still have to do to your Amazon EC2 instance. You have the responsibility, but this will allow you to build out your standard security environment. You still have to test the security of your solution before you decide to go live. The same coding principles that apply and your traditional environment apply in your Amazon environment. It's very likely these days that you're writing web applications, even for internal use. They may not be on the internet, they may be intranet applications. I always encourage everyone, go to the OWASP website, find their top 10 vulnerabilities and top 10 solutions, and apply them to your applications. Do a penetration test before you go live. Have a professional organization perform a web application security test on your application before you go live. You can still perform pen tests against your Amazon assets. All we ask is that you seek our permission first through a simple form that we have on our website. We also produce a number of best practice documents, of auditing guides, of operational checklists. Read through these guides read those checklists before you go live. Make sure that you sought our advice of others' advice to give yourself the best chance of putting a secure application up. Now, I talk about this many times. You have responsibility to patch your applications within your virtual private cloud. 
when you're using Amazon services like S3 or Dynamo or RDS, Amazon is doing all that patching for you. When you're running EC2, you decide what patches to apply and when to patch them. Many of us will come from a corporate environment where maybe patch management has always been difficult and always been hard. This is an opportunity to look at how you patch again and try and do better. Within your virtual private cloud, the life cycle of your servers may be very short, maybe because you're using auto scaling, you're bringing up your capacity and bringing it back down again. Think of how you can use automation and configuration at that point in time to automatically apply and test patches. This could help you start patching critical vulnerabilities in hours rather than the days or weeks or months that you may be doing at this point in time. Amazon Elastic Beanstalk is our platform service where you just have to deploy your code. .NET, Java, many other things there. Where Amazon pre-configures the platform, you just give it our code. That can help you with your patching enormously as well, so that you can always patch it, keep it up to date, and all you have to worry about is deploying the latest version of your application on there. You should always check the integrity of your Amazon configurations, of your application and server configurations over time. CloudTrail will help you monitor changes made to your environment, but you should be looking to make sure that the security design patterns of the security configuration that you had at launch time is still the same six months later when you may have applied many changes to that. Back in the physical world, people typically use tools like Tripwire to help them check the integrity of their host servers. You can still run that on Amazon. You can use automation and deployment tools like Chef and Puppet to help you understand the configuration of your servers and why it changed and automatically recover it from it. When your data center is within AWS, you have the ability to describe everything. So you could create a simple script that every hour it said, describe my security groups, describe my internet gateways, describe my routing, describe my subnets. And all you have to do is keep comparing the outputs of those scripts. And if it changes, that might give you some visibility that changes happen that you haven't approved from a security point of view. So it becomes a very powerful way of detecting changes to your entire Amazon data center at any point in time. Whitelisting is one of the most powerful security controls that you can deploy. Whitelisting is going to present, prevent malicious code running within your instance. If you can use whitelisting, you're going to get rid of 99.9% .9 of security vulnerabilities by not allowing the attacker to run their code on your server. I always encourage people to try and use whitelisting where they can. Now you may have looked at the virtual private cloud network and thought there's no network switch. Ah, sorry, wrong slide. Let's talk about monitoring for security instance and how you should have a plan to respond. With NEC2, you are responsible for detecting and responding to security instance because they're likely to have happened because of your application and your configuration. Think about what sources of information you can get from your Amazon environment, from logging, a data, Amazon Cloud Trail, what our APIs can tell you, what the various logs from various Amazon services like S3 and others can tell you. How are you going to monitor that information on an ongoing basis? What events will happen that cause you to have alarms that you need to respond to? How will you know if an incident has taken place? You need to think about this and how you're going to do it within your Amazon environment. Think about the information assets that you may take and store within Amazon whether that's personal sensitive data, or credit cards, or healthcare records, so that if the worst happens and you suffer a breach, then very quickly you know what information may have been compromised, and that's going to help you react to it, to maybe deal with the media, to do your own instant response plans. Now, winding back, you may have looked at the VPC and thought, I have no network switch. Where is my span port? Where can I plug in my network intrusion detection service? Or there is no span port within your VPC. And typically nowadays, intrusion detection at the network level has been much less useful than building web application firewalls that sit at your application level. And that's where most of the common attacks are. 
and most of you will be building web applications. So web application firewalls are going to be where you should probably concentrate your threat detection. Now you can still build a threat detection DMZ within your VPC. You can use open source such as Mod Security. You can use a number of different AWS technology partner solutions. For example, the Riverbed Whitewater Traffic Manager and Web Application Firewall. The purpose of your web application firewall, or WAF, is to drop the bad traffic before it hits your valuable application or your expensive database resources. This is the first point where you're going to get the chance to drop things like denial of service attacks, malformed web traffic, SQL injection attacks, or otherwise. You can also implement your web application firewalls as two-way proxies. This can start giving you basic data loss prevention functionality. For example, if you analyze the traffic flow out and it contains credit card numbers, that may actually not be a good event. It might mean someone's hacked your payments database and you probably want to stop that traffic flow. You need to design web application firewalls on a public website to cope with huge traffic volumes because on the internet means you may always be the subject of a volumetric attack. Using the simple architecture pattern that we used earlier, I want to just show you quickly how you can build a web application firewall layer, or WAF, that spans multiple availability zones, that uses auto-scaling, that uses internet load balancing, that uses internal load balancing, to give you the ability to rapidly scale yourself out if threats start hitting your applications. So you can build this using mod security, an Nginx, Apache, or Internet Information Server. You can use Riverbed Stingray or other load balancers to help you here. Build a very scalable threat detection layer that's going to analyze and drop bad traffic before it hits your application, but still allow all your legitimate customers through. And this application is going to scale fast and wide is going to cope with any failure and keep working as well so you're not introducing single points of failure into your Amazon solution. But you're not alone when you face a large-scale volumetric attack. And here's you, and here's your virtual private cloud, and here's the things that you can do. You can use auto-scaling. If you design your application properly, you can scale out as far and wide as you want within your own financial threshold. We will give you the scale and bandwidth of our region that you can use. If you design your application to be very stateless, to use the concept of queues and workers to manage and deal with customer transactions, it can take multiple failures, it can scale harder and faster and wider. Think about how you can shard your databases. When you face a volumetric attack, the database is typically the point of weakness Make sure you've thought about how you can scale your database using read replicas and others so that if you take load, you can scale out, you can keep working. But you're not alone when you face attack because you can bring an Amazon at your side to help you. And here's some of the things that we have. We have CloudFront, which is 46 global endpoints and growing all the time. We have Amazon S3, our large scale object store that we manage the capacity and scale. We have Amazon Route 53, our DNS service, which currently has a 100% SLA. We have our own 24 by seven, every single day of the year, security and operational teams looking after and running and delivering these services. 